The concept of the truth that I'm going to share tonight was never created or born. It was always in the heart of God. But the facts was written down about 1,900 to 2,000 years ago, derived from facts and events that happened between two and 6,000 years ago. But the exact compilation of how it will be presented tonight was born about an hour ago on that table. <laughs> um, Ian couldn't make it, so he let me know he had a big crisis at his job. So I will be... Um, I will have the, yeah, the privilege to present you with tonight's message. I might just want to take out my Bible. <laughs> um, I'm going I'm I'm to read from Galatians 4 and verse 3. If you have Bibles, um, you can turn there with me. Galatians 4 verse 3. Okay, are you there? <laughs> Galatians 4 verse 3 says, um, yeah, maybe I must get it also, hey? It says, even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. I'm just going to click on a read from verse 1 to just get the context. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, there is nothing from a servant, though he is lord of all. But he is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so we, when we were children, were under bondage under the elements of this world. Verse 9. But now, after that you have been known, you have known God, or rather, are known of God, how do you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto you, you desire again to be in bondage? Okay, so it says the elements of this world is bondage, or it, it brings bondage. Okay, then it says, verse 10, you observe days and months and times and years. So you, you've got special days and feasts and these kind of things. You, you, you privilege certain events over others um, spiritually now. Okay, now I want to go to Colossians 2, verse 20. Um, I'm just laying a quick foundation and of what I'm going to speak about. Galatians 2 verse 20, it says, <coughs> Colossians, Colossians, sorry, uh, not Galatians, Colossians 2 verse 20. It says, Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as thou living in the world are you subject to ordinances? Touch not, taste not, and handle not which all are to perish with the using of the commandments and doctrines of men. He says, why again under the rudiments or basic principles of this world, touch not, handle not. Um, so the same as in Galatians, the, the basic elements, rudiments or basic principles of this world is to touch not, do not do this, do not do that. This is certain days, do this, you know, this is a... Sundays are more important than Saturdays or the other way around or what, what. Okay. Now, very interesting. It says, um, why as though living in the world? And then it says, are you in bondage again? So living in the world here yeah, is to be under the law. It's not to be among the sinners. It's to be under the law. To be under the, the, the rudiments, principles of this world that says, do not touch, do not handle this day is better than that day, this week is better than that week, things like that. That is living in the world under the law, and it's the rudiments or basic elements of this world which brings bondage. Romans 4. Okay. Romans 4. Now, this is quite interesting. Um, because... Mostly we've been taught that the world is those people in the bar or in the nightclub. We've always been taught that, you know, or the, the folks at school, the bad guys, you want them to dig all the time, um, the world. And it is referred to as the world, as is the legalistic system, which was controlled by the Sanhedrin, by Jesus. Um, they said, 
the world doesn't come to the light because they work, they, 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 they deeds are dark. And then he says to them, Jerusalem, he says, I wanted to gather you as a hen gathers a chick, but you would not come. So um, the darkness is those that reject the light. And those that reject the light are those that rejected Jesus Christ, which is the law system, because the law is opposed to the light. Not the law itself, not the, the standard that the law stands for. It's, the standard is not ag against the light, but what, what's brought forth from the law is sin and death, and that is opposed to the light. Romans 4 verse 1. It says, What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found, or what shall we say then, was fa Abraham our father found pertaining to the flesh? Um, for if Abraham were justified by works, he, hath, um, he could have gloried, but not before God. For what saith the Scriptures? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. If you work for a salary, it's own, it's owed you, you know. If you obey certain things, it, it, it gives, you know, the reward is of death. It's not of grace. It's not a blessing. But to him that works not, but believes unto him that justifies the un ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God does not impute righteous, or imputes righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are the, those whose sins and iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that the faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How is it that this reckoned? When he was in circumcision or uncircumcision, now in circumcision, not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And then he says, very interesting, he says, um, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of faith, which has yet been uncircumcised. Okay, so, um, the, law, the, the law, Abraham was not found holy or righteous by the law. He was, by the faith in God, accounted righteousness. The, the, the law could not bring that, if you read Romans 3 a bit, um, which I, I don't think I'm going to read now, we read that um, the, all men, Jews and Greeks and Gentiles, all of them were found guilty under the law. The law was given so that sin could be shown um, in them. The law's purpose was to show forth sin so that all could be counted under sin. Um, and, and Paul says even this could clearly be seen from the law and the prophets. So if we clearly, if we um, accurately read the law and prophets, we can clearly see that under the law no man could be justified, and under the law no man could um, become holy or righteous before God. All that were under the law or not under the law, all were sinners. So that God could be just and not man. So now there's no more boasting in my abilities to do the law. We boast in the fact that we are declared righteous by faith. And then it goes on, it says, um, what is boasting then? It is in the fact, um, it's, or, or, why is, is there no more boasting? Is it because of the law? No, but because of the law of faith. And the other day, you know, people might say, yeah, but if you say we must believe, it's again a work. You know, and I said, okay, if I come to you and I give you a thousand bucks and you receive the gift, to who is the honor? To you receiving the gift or to me giving you the gift? If God, if His, if His Word brings faith in our hearts and we believe that faith, we have nothing to boast for because it's Him that brought the faith. The, 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 the honor and the boasting is His. He gave us that gift of life. He gave us the gift of grace. And the, the fact that He gave it to us brought faith in our hearts. And when we believe that faith, it is accounted for righteousness. So we can't even boast in our believing because it's not a deed we done. It, it, it's it's a reaction we 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 do up, up upon his faith. Okay. Now it says Abraham received the circumcision, or had to be, was circumcised as a sign of the righteousness he already had. Um, we are baptized to as a sign that we are we have died to the law and have been risen to Christ. Um, 
all those things are sign of the correct or, or of the reality that has already taken place. But the law, the law said, you shall circumcise yourself to show your righteousness. So the law was totally the other way around. The law said, do this, and it shall show forth this. Go, um, go to the temple, and um, then you shall sacrifice a lamb, and then your sins shall be forgiven. It was an outward deed to try to manifest a, a, a spiritual thing that had to be there, but it was never there. Do these and these and these and these things. Touch not, handle not, do not. And then you shall be holy. So if we do all the correct things, if, if we put God here and we see, okay, God does not murder, God does not lie, God does not steal, He does not envy. Therefore, if we murder, steal, envy, then we are like God. No. It's outward. You keep certain days and festivals to say that this is a holy day, so when we go on this holy day and we do certain holy things, then we are called righteous. And that's the problem with the law because the law tried to manifest things that was never there. It was just an outward display of things that should have been there. But in, 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 and that's why Abraham's covenant was the correct one. He did not give his tithe to Melchizedek to say, well, you know, no. He was blessed with all this. And then he gave it. It was already a blessing, and then he said, I choose you as my king, which we, um, you know, learn on later on. The tithing was not a saying, okay, I need to give. No, it was a, it was a saying, you are my king, because in those days, um, it was a Bab Babylonian use. Um, you, you guys never heard this before. I don't think so. Bertie was here explained last time. Um, with Abraham's time, there was not Jerusalem and all those places. The, the Jews, Jewish nation has not yet existed. Abraham was, it was a heathen. He, he worshipped the sun god. So what happened is um, there were many kings all over the place. And each one had their own king, like in the old middle, uh, you know, the, the middle ages and the dark ages. And so what happened is if any man went to war with someone else, and he, 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 he was victorious, and he brought back the spoils, he had to give, they, they call it the, 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 the valley of kings, he would meet his king there and offer 10% of, what, of all his spoils to the king to say, I accept you as my king. And that was a, a, a showing that I honor this man as king and I, I submit myself to him because otherwise the king would know, if he did not give it, the king would know this is um, uh, a declaration of war because if he could defeat the other king, he might also be able to defeat me. So th this was a, 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 a Babylonian or before Babylon, that other, I don't know, I even know that nation, but it, it, was, it was like custom. So what happened is, the one king came to make war with, with, with the king that Abraham was under, and he took all the spoils, and also some of Abraham's um, people and slaves. And then Abraham gathered up all his um, servants and slaves, and went and made war with that king and conquered him. And then he came back with all those spoils. And this king came and said, give me, keep all the spoils, just give me my household and my slaves and things like that. And then um, Melchizedek, who was the king of Salem, also came and gave Abraham bread and wine, which is, we know now is a, is, a, is a symbol of the New Testament, bread and wine, my body. But Abraham didn't knew that. He only saw this king coming to, to bless him because, I mean, he came from war. He was hungry and thirsty. And then Abraham had to give this king, um, the, the one that he used to be, you know, be under, 10% of everything. But he didn't. He gave, it to, he gave it to Melchizedek. So what happened is, what happened there was he exchanged kingship. He said, I accept you now, Melchizedek, as my king. And that is, that tithing, if we want to have a spiritual interpretation of it today, is the moment we say, I accept you now as my king, Lord Jesus Christ. It is the, the accepting of Jesus Christ as king. Okay, so um, then God said, I will bless you, Abraham, um, as father of many nations. And Abraham believed God, and that was accounted as righteousness. And then, later on, he was circumcised. So every time, everything with, 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 with Abraham, and we see later on, as Paul draws all these, we see this is the New Testament. 
it's, we don't have these outward things going on, but there's nothing inside. What happened is that, um, go, going on there. Okay. Um, so then, I want to read a bit on. It says, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of our faith of our father Abraham, which, has been, which had been yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness which was of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise of non effect. So the promise of God would be made of non effect and faith, the law of faith would be made of non effect if people that stand under the law could be righteous by that law. Okay. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to um, them only that are of the law, but them um, which are of the faith of Abraham also, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed. Even God who quickens the dead and calleth those things which are not as though they were, who against thou believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. And then he says, I mean, Abraham was over 90, almost 100, and Sarah was 100, and he believed. Hello, Malcolm. Welcome. And then he believed God still, even though it was not possible. But the word of God brought faith in him that it could come to pass. And he believed God in his word, even knowing that God had to call things that were dead and make things that was not already there. Okay. So this was accounted to righteousness. Um, this was just the whole um, introduction of that. Now I want to go to Romans 8, verse 19. Romans 8. Verse 19. Okay, it says... For the earnest expectation of the creature or creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creation was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creation itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Who we know that the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to whip the redemption of our bodies. So the creation and ourselves wait for the redemption of our bodies. Okay, because uh, if our bodies are redeemed, they will, this creation will be delivered from corruption unto where it was subject. Death, um, rust, you know, cor everything that, that comes with corruption. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is not seen, or hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we, we, we do not see, then we do it with patience and wait for it. Okay, so if, if we think we have already received our, um, our adoptions as son uh, and the redemption of our bodies, that our bodies, bodies are yet already perfect um, and, uh, you know, uncorrupted or yet perfect, then... We are fools because why do we hope for something and why does this, corrupt, this whole creation wait for something that has already taken place? No, we, we, we hope for something that is not yet manifest. So we live in this mortal bodies that is subject to decay and sickness and with that we hope with patience or we wait for patience for it. But we know that this creation all groans and we do for the redemption of our bodies. Okay. And now I want to go to Second Peter verse 3. Um, and then it will seem a bit clearer. <laughs> Second Peter, verse three, uh, chapter three. Sorry, verse ten. It says, "But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in that which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up." You know, in Bible school, it, it, it was there, it said, 
and the elements in brackets, houses and BMWs, literally like that. And I thought, what the houses and BMWs, etc. Okay, it says the elements shall melt away, the earth and the works that is therein. Now, how will works melt up? Works, deeds, murder, envy, how will works? Because the works of the flesh is drunkenness. How will that burn up? If it's then, the, you know, you understand. It's not talking about metal and steel and, uh, you know, wood. It's not talking about those kind of elements. Remember the beginning? Why again do you go to the elements, the basic principles, the rudiments of this world? Desiring again to be in bondage. Okay, so it says, the elements of this world, which is, touch not, handle not, do not, preserving certain days and months, they will be burnt up, and the works that is therein. Why again, as if living in this world, are you desiring again to be bondage? Handle not, taste not. The things in this world, the things in the in in, in those those kind of those um, you know works rudiments, seeing that all of these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you be in all holiness and conversation and godliness, looking for the and hasting for the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens shall being on fire shall dissolve and the elements shall melt away with fervent heat. Oops. Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. We look for an, a, a new world, a new system, or a new um, structure, not structure, a, a new order, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Not wherein dwelleth unrighteousness, shown forth, or um, presented as righteousness. Jesus called the Pharisees, you are whitewashed graves. You look beautiful on the outside, the inside is death. So we, we, we are white for a world. And um, So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that a bit. So what, what is so awesome for me here is the fact that um, that the elements always, you know, it, 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 it's not talking about metal and things. It talks, it talks about the elements of this world. And that's what we wait for. That's, that's the thing that we wait for. That's why we endure. Because we know that though we still see the, the death of the law all around us, we, we feel the, the, the manifestation of Adam's transgression or con, trans, translation towards the law. We, see, we, we still feel that in our bodies. But we know it will end because we groan feeling this burden of death in our bodies. Even though we walk in the new man, renewed in our inward self, we feel dying every day. And this creation itself, it dies. I mean, we think global warming, you know, all those kind of things. It's just nature groaning for, for the Lord to return so that He can once again come back and put us in the state that He originally created us for. Us and creation. That we can walk in the fullness that God has, has made us for. And this is what we wait for. This is our hope as Christians. And um, Hebrews says, if we throw away this hope, this hope is the anchor for our faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. The hope is there first. Because the promise is made, was made by God. And then we hoped in that promise. And when we, when we hoped in that promise, the faith became something, an essence of something. It became an essence of that hope. And that, 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 that faith is what keeps us strong. But what is the faith, the essence of that faith? It is the hope of the word that God gave us. And, and, and that is why it says faith, hope, and love. Because God is love. We know that. Therefore, we know what He says will be sure. If we don't know God is love, we can't. We will doubt in His word. We won't be able to know if we can truly trust Him. Then our hope will be in vain and our faith will be weak. But when we know God is love, perfect love, 
unshakable, unchangeable, never wavering, then we know whatever He says can be trusted. And then when, he, when, when, when we hear His promises, our hope rests in that. And then we have faith. And that faith is the, the start and the finish of our, of, of our salvation. He is the, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that saves us. And um, I think Peter also says, or James says, this word, um, hold fast to the word of, um, word of faith, the word of life, because it, it is the end, it is the power unto the saving of the soul. And this gospel is the power of God unto salvation unto all that believe it. Um, and the elements, yeah, like, like I said, is that. So we, we keep away from living in the world under those things, which brings death. We, we don't go again, I mean, like, um, like a, uh, you know, um, I also, that's what I also wanted to say is, Abraham was, believed God, and then he was declared righteous, and he was circumcised as a sign of his righteousness. Now, going back unto the rudiments and the laws of this world, unto bondage, we uncircumcise ourselves. And that's why he says, how, you know, if we then trample the blood, you know, what is then left? Because the, 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 the circumcision that is our salvation, or the sign of our salvation, we have become uncircumcised. We, we, we went back from salvation to the thing that, 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 that made Adam fall from God. That was the very thing that, 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 that brought him there. So we don't go back again to um, rudiments and ordinances. He says, why, as though living in this world, are you again under ordinances? We don't go un, 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 back unto ordinances. This is what we must do, must not do. This is what God expects of us now. We live as by Christ indwelling us. Our every action, our every deed, our every decision is made by the living God within us. Every decision, act, and deed comes forth from His nature within us. It is His nature within us that we live from, that we think from and decide from. It is, we, we allow this nature by the gospel to transform our thoughts. And then our thoughts coming from, from, from His nature will bring forth deeds that come from His nature and not from some ordinance trying to live up to the standard of God.